Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, Matariki is on Friday and a lot of people across New Zealand are wondering what the weather will be like hoping to get some stargazing in there. I would say that the best chance for viewing uh, stars will be tonight, Thursday night going into Friday morning. We've still got the high over the top of us, light winds in many areas. As this high moves further to the east, the northerly wind will start to build. So the overnight lows in New Zealand are about to jump up after some very cold mornings, but that will also bring in some cloud. So we're going to get cloudier weather as we go through the weekend in a number of regions. So uh, best chance for stargazing looks like it will be tonight. So we've got this big high over New Zealand slowly moving away and a big high in Australia moving across the country and another one over here in the Indian Ocean yet to move through. So a lot of high pressure dominates our weather map. So here we are for Friday for Matariki in New Zealand. We're seeing that high out to the east near the Chathams and therefore a milder northerly flow to northwesterly flow comes down. Dunedin Airport, Met Service just put this out this morning, has just recorded its coldest ever June temperature. So that's quite a remarkable headline and I think it said it was the fifth coldest uh, of all temperatures there. Um, so Met Service have that up on Twitter if you want to read more details about that. So very cold weather. We've seen the minus 10s and minus 11s around central Otago. Well, it'll be a very different story as we go through the next few days ahead as those northerly winds develop and they certainly start on Friday with rain and showers developing in some northern and western areas. And over in Australia, you're being clipped by that windy westerly due to stormy weather further down in the Southern Ocean. Now this weekend, that stormy weather remains there, so very windy across Tasmania, Bass Strait, getting in towards Melbourne. Over in New Zealand, also windy. Same system, same low pressure to the south, same area of high pressure to the north, and that encourages a windy nor'wester on Saturday. So the chance of frosts on Saturday look far less likely across the country. There might still be an isolated pocket if you're uh, in a sheltered area, but really it does look like it isn't looking so likely, and rain certainly on the uh, western side, or showers, rain or showers, kind of a patchy setup. And then we get into Sunday, and there could be a few more downpours in the north, possibly an isolated heavy downpour. Otherwise, much calmer, a light southwest flow, but over in Australia, a colder southerly injection comes in for Hobart and over in Melbourne. So next week kicks off with an area of high pressure around northern New Zealand and another big high out over Adelaide. In between the two, there is a cold front trying to move through, so a bit of rain on Monday, but still with those nor'westers, so it won't be too cold. By Tuesday, though, this is an interesting one to watch. Now, the modeling is not locked in with this one. In fact, some of the computer modeling is really quite extreme next week. One picks this storm, the GFS maps that we're showing you here, but uh, at the time we recorded this, the ECM maps were saying, no, no, more high pressure coming through. Now, 1033 is a pretty strong high. This low is one to keep an eye on because it might form in between that high and the outgoing one. Perfect place for a low pressure zone to form. And by Wednesday next week, if this modeling is correct, we could be seeing a storm coming into northern New Zealand. But like I say, not all the modeling is in total agreement about this. And at this time of the year, this is the sort of weather we can get. It can be quite dramatic and changeable in a fairly short amount of time. So keep an eye on it. Your local forecasts at weatherwatch.co.nz and ruralweather.co.nz will keep you covered. It updates every one hour through the IBM supercomputer. So they're looking at these computer models and these big global ones update really about every 12 hours. So we have these micro hourly updates and then every 12 hours the big global models change. So that's why sometimes it takes a bit of a you know, half a day or so sometimes for some uh, forecast to catch up. But hopefully uh, our forecasts are pretty much monitoring what is going on with these conflicting computer models. Now it's a long weekend in New Zealand, Matariki on Friday, uh, and also we've had such a busy run of weather lately across New Zealand that we're taking a long weekend, so I'll be away on Monday as well, uh, and back again with our videos on Tuesday. So a four day weekend for us at Weather Watch. If you do need uh, more information though, just simply go to our website, weatherwatch.co.nz, or download our free app. Have a great weekend, we'll see you next Tuesday.